Hello, my name is Charlotte and today I will be unboxing the Marigold Tarot. Um, I am very excited about this package because I have had my eye on this deck for a very long time and as you might see in the box I may have splurged a little bit so let's open it up. Let's actually see what way I should open this up. it. Oh, I've opened it up the wrong way. <laughs> okay, so first here, we have the tarot cloth. We have the deck. I have the gold gilded edition. Another tarot cloth? Oh, the tarot bag! With apparently we get an extra card. And then I have the book, which is the guidebook, which provides additional. Ooh, it's bound a little bit. And then last, I also ordered the altar stand, which is larger than I expected. So I'll get this all unpackaged uh, so we can properly view it. So, first up, we have the cloth, which is beautiful. I'm one of those people that as soon as I see something that is gold and shiny, I need to have it. But I'm generally very good at not buying anything that is gold and shiny. But this I have wanted for so long. Oh, it is having a little bit of a reflection, I see, because of the fold over here. I apologize for that. And then I have the back, the pouch, whatever you want to call it with a card. Is it a sticker? Oh, it's a sticker. And I think it is holographic. I'm not sure if the camera will pick that up. Oh, it does. That is really pretty. With a card that unfortunately is a little bit folded. And then the pouch to store the deck in. Let's put that to the side. this piece of wood to store the cards in. You can put them in there like that. I really enjoy that that is very large because it can hold, I'm pretty sure, up to three cards at least. You have the sun, or the sun, <laughs> we have the sun, the moon and the sun, uh, and then the skull. So this deck is full of skulls. If you do not enjoy skulls, this deck is not going to be for you. Well, first, let's... I apologize, there is a dock outside. We have the Marigold Tarot. Oh, let's open it up. So, here we have the actual tarot itself. This is the gold gilded edition. It is so pretty. On the back it says, a 78 card tarot deck rooted in life, death and gold. Illustrated by Amrit Brar. I apologize if I mispronounce that. So the entire deck is in black, white and gold. It features a lot of skulls. I think it is based on the Punjabi. Pretty. It has this linen finish, so if you can see, it has this cross. Uh, I'm not sure if the camera will pick that up or not. There, you can see it. And I have the gold gilded version. 
This is the back of the card. So I think I will just give you a simple walkthrough and then I will dive into the book for a little bit. It is so incredibly pretty. Let's bring you a little bit closer. This is my first time looking at the deck as well. I mean, I have watched some videos online, but... Oh, the chariot is on a bicycle. As a Dutch person whose main mode of transportation is a bicycle, that makes me very excited. I just love that this deck has a little bit of a more sinister, more dark vibe, because most of the decks that I currently have are all very happy. Not to say that this deck is maybe not happy, but it has that darker feeling because of all the skulls and the skeletons and... Wheel of Fortune. What is it? Is it a... like a water? I'm curious. I'm going to take a little peek at the guidebook because I'm not really sure what I'm looking at here. I'm just curious to see, see what the guidebook actually provides. Let's take a look. Oh, let's zoom out a little bit. It's not a manual on how to use it, it is a symbolism. Marigolds are commonly seen throughout celebrations and auspicious occasions in an individual's life. So we have a little bit about the deck. Uh, teeth and bone, major arcana. And then we just immediately dive in. Okay, so let's look up. Oh, we have a... Nice. Wheel of Fortune. Key symbols. Chef cutter. Oh, that's what I'm looking at. Okay, chrysanthemums and severed fingers. I had not noticed the severed fingers yet. That's what I meant with this deck has a little bit of a darker vibe. Um, hand cranked chaff cutters are traditionally used by Punjabi fab farmers to cut hay for a livestock feed. Chaff cutters are known for amputating fingers in the event of their operators losing focus of their work. The chaff cutter and its blades are of the wheel of fortune, bordered by four hands, some of which sport missing fingers. Amla branches and chrysanthemum flowers imply healing and optimism. The wheel of fortune is typically associated with positive changes in luck and monetary pursuits. It implies that a change in one's destiny is apparent, but caution should be employed before jumping into something that sounds too good to be true. All things are cyclical, and good fortune among them. Reverse discards suggest poor luck and failure. I love that interpretation. So let's continue. I won't try and talk through the entire deck because I have a little bit of a sore throat and I think I might be catching a cold. Um, but if it's the same thing that my boyfriend had, it should be over in like two days. bring you a little bit closer again so you can have a better look at these cards. So now we're getting into the wands and I think all the wands are flowers or plants. And I am going to assume that the guidebook will actually give a little bit on what each plant is, since it did for the Wheel of Fortune that we just looked at. So I'm going to wonder if... Because the, the creator of this deck is Canadian, I think, or at least it was shipped to me from Canada. So I'm not sure if all these plants will be native to Canada, or... Does it say? I don't think it does. It's the Punjab region that spans between India and Pakistan. It also uses Roman numerals instead of the Gurmukhi numerals specific to Punjabi. 
it's kind of a crossroads. It is recommended that this book be used in conjunction with guides of tr to the traditional Rider Waite Smith tarot and tarot reading guides for those who are new to the medium. So it doesn't say whether the plants are native to the Punjabi region or to Canada. Because I think that the marigold as a plant is native to um, the Americas. I think I have looked it up before and it was native to Mexico, but don't point me on that because I am not too sure. It also draws influence from the Sikh faith. The Sikhi as a religion does not hold premonitions of, or fortune telling. The use of poetry, allegory and storytelling may be widespread, but it is a faith that demands a presence of conscience and, and that, that focuses on the now. That's nice, because personally I use tarot readings more as a way of providing a different perspective to whatever question is on your mind, and not so much as fortune-telling. Although, sometimes you just pull a card and it is scary, almost scarily accurate, so even though I do consider myself a skeptic, um, I am not going to pretend that I do not sometimes do use it as so let's see. The suit of wands is traditionally associated with the element of fire. It explores ambition, creativity, change, the ego, and growth. In this deck, wands is represented by stems or of a variety of flowers. The significance of each flower mirroring the original intentions of the suit. Growth, the, in the most organic of fashions, is unavoidable. All things live, evolve, and die to make room for others to do the same. So it doesn't say anything about where all the flowers come from. But I'm going to assume that not all of them will grow where I live. So I will continue. If you were looking for a simple walkthrough, this is probably not the video because this is just me impulsively deciding that I'm going to make a video again because I haven't in months. So I'm just chatting a little bit. I have not thought out of how I want to do this at all, but... Oh, I love this deck so much. I really did not expect that it would arrive so quickly. Because the website, I think, said that I should expect delivery dates of like 22 to 75 days because of COVID, which I don't think is that much of a problem anymore right now at the moment I'm recording. But I think I ordered it last week, so it was like a week. Even though it was internationally shipping, like from Canada to Europe. So I am very surprised with the quick delivery. I did not expect this though. This makes me so happy because holographic is also shiny. I'm just one of those people who really love shiny things. I also love all the sunflowers. Just this deck is so pretty. Now we're reaching the cups. The cups are all skulls, which may be a little bit morbid if you're not really a fan of skulls, but wait, I need to show you something. I'll be right back. So this entire suit really reminds me of this. this I'll zoom out a little bit. This is a 3D printed skull that my dad made for me a while back. I use it to store some hair ties, but this has been in my bathroom as a decorative piece, um, but it has a hole on top of it. I wouldn't know what else to store in it except for some hair ties, but it just... I'm going to put this over here because I think that is very fitting. I'm going to continue. Okay, okay. <laughs> Sorry for being a little bit all over the place, but wow. Even in this suit, there are still a lot of plants and flowers. I can't wait to actually really dive in and explore and look at all what all the different plants are. I am definitely going to look up whether these plants grow around here or not. And even if they don't, I would still love to learn more about it. It's just so pretty. the swords which I think has different types of swords yes so 
as you can see, this deck in his minor arcana is a little bit more simplistic, I would say, but I think still, if you really dive in, there is a lot of symbology. Whoa, this reminded me of the Three of Swords for a second because of the cross, uh, the cross swords. Pentacles have been changed to rings. I did not even really notice it at first during the at the ace, but so I would think that the only cup that ha the only suit that hasn't really changed is the swords because the ones were flowers or plants, and then the cups were skulls and the pentacles are rings, but only the swords were actual swords. book has to say about rings as a suit. I'll look it up for a second. I am really glad that I also got the book because um, it does come with a PDF version. The book is not included with the deck in general. Oh, the book is just so pretty. Um, but I'm really glad I also got this one because I just really like having a, a physical book to look at and read through. And especially since this deck does feature um, some symbology and plants, that I really think it does add something to have the book and hold it in my hands. Even though you can use Rider Waite Smith symbology to read with this deck, I just can't wait to really explore it. I'm just very excited. So let's see. Rings. The suit of rings, otherwise known as discs, coins, or pentacles, is traditionally associated with the element Earth. It navigates earthly matters and concerns, such as money, physical or financial security, material wealth, and the home. In this deck, the suit is represented by physical rings and hands rendered in flesh instead of bone, with the exception of the court cards. Oh, I didn't... I also didn't notice that, that the hands in fact are hands and not bones or skeletons, even though I think I think these are the only cards that actually feature flesh instead of just skeletons and bones and teeth and it's nice because it represents the physical and the more material and well my hands are quite physical, so <laughs> that works. were all the cards. I'm going to try and give them a shuffle, although I am not the best shuffler. I don't do riffle shuffling at all. But also I think that with a deck that has um, gilded edges such as these, you probably don't want to riffle shuffle because you are going to damage the edging. I think this deck is going to shuffle wonderfully. Wait, there was one card over there that's not incorrect. There. Page of Cups. Actually, let's take that because I want to see how well these cards will stay in here. Actually, can I? I'm going to change the perspective a little bit. So you can actually see. shuffling. Let's see how many cards I can fit in there. Wait a second, that's not a card. <laughs> that's not a card, that's the sticker that I got. Let's 
put it over there. I'm just so happy. I know I said that already, but still. It shuffles really well. Let's actually shuffle on camera for a second. I don't think... I think if you wanted to ruffle shuffle, you could. So cardstock itself, pretty decent. I mean, it's, I would say, quite standard. I do think it is a standard size for tarot cards. Let's actually put this one over here. Let's see how many cards I can put in here. Can we fit four? I think we can. We want to. Yeah, you can fit four in there. So we got Page of Cups, King of Swords, Reversed Five of Cups, and the Reversed Seven of Rings. So let's take a little bit of a look at the guidebook and see what it has to say about these cards. So Page of Cups. Page of Cups, key symbols, uh, orange blossoms, orange fruit. Yes, the Page of Cups is represented by a skull overflowing with oranges and orange blossoms. This card concerns itself with budding relationships and ventures, creativity, new desire and intuition. Oranges and their blossoms are bright, cheerful, fragrant and youthful. It implies that inspiration is on the upswing, new and exciting possibilities, ideas and people may be explored, and that stagnation and old habits may need to be challenged. Reverse discards can suggest deception and re-evaluating whether a relationship or goal is truly fulfilling. Actually, I don't think you're going to be interested in hearing me read out all of these descriptions, so I think I will leave it at that. Also, I just want to say that I only noticed now that the skulls on the Five of Cups are actually upside down because I pulled it reversed. But they're actually upside down if I hold it upright. That's nice. Anyway, I am going to enjoy this deck so much. I hope you enjoyed this video and I plan on making more videos. So if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, but you don't have to because I really understand not subscribing to people you don't really care or just want to watch a bit more videos. I will probably make more videos about tarot decks and oracle decks because I may still have a few that I want to show on camera really, really very much. <laughs> so I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and I will see you next time. Bye.